friends, I am here in sunny Cape Coral, Florida, and I have come to my family's house down here and took a look at the sunscreens, and what I found is incredibly alarming. So these are the sunscreens that I found in our Florida house, of which we have our whole family stay here, where we have like six kids under the age of 12 and a newborn baby boy. And so they're all using these sunscreens, which you see down here. So these are probably the most common sunscreens that anybody would buy, right? And so this is Neutrogena SPF 100. You would think that that's like the safest thing in the world and the best, right? Aveeno SPF 55 baby continuous protection, broad spectrum, perfect. Mild as water with soothing oatmeal, sweat and water resistant, 80 minutes. Sounds absolutely fantastic, right? Super safe for babies. Copper tone sport, like these are the sport ones. You would think that these are good, right? Beach defense, super cool if you want to get tan. I don't know. These are literally, like I did not buy any of these. These were all the sunscreens that I found in our house. And I think that this is a very accurate overview of like the most common sunscreens. These are literally all of the sunscreens that I found at the house. I did not purchase any of these. I did not select any of these. These are completely only the ones that I found at the house. And I think that this is a very accurate representation of what would buy for sunscreens because usually you go to the grocery store go wherever to get a sunscreen and you look for the highest SPF because you think that the higher the SPF the higher protection which is not true first of all um, and you look for something that's safe for babies so a vino baby like what better right um, and then Neutrogena the most most trusted, number one dermatologist recommended with their patented Helioplex technology, which Mythbuster, Helioplex, all that it is is a combination or is their combination of avobenzone and oxybenzone, which are two UVA filters. And avobenzone is really unstable, so it needs to be stabilized, and oxybenzone is super stable. And um, oxybenzone is Yes, bark at oxybenzone because it's horrendous and toxic. It is a complete endocrine disruptor and mimics the hormone estrogen and bleaches the corals and does a bunch of really bad things, which I can get into later or in a whole series of videos that I'm doing on oxybenzone. But bottom line is that, so I wrote down the active ingredients of these, which I'll flip these over quick and we'll take a look at what's really in them because the fact is the higher the SPF does not mean the higher the protection. It's all about the active ingredients and a lot of active ingredients are very, very unsafe and a lot of chemicals are really, really dangerous including oxybenzone and octanoxate which are endocrine disruptors and have been proven for decades to bleach the corals and much worse. So we'll flip these over and take a look at the active ingredients in them. Um, again, that is the true measure of how good a sunscreen is, is the active ingredients and how well that it will protect you, not the SPF. Because you can combine a lot of really bad ingredients to get a really high SPF and it's not gonna do you any good. So let's flip these over and take a look. Okay, perfect. 
So here we have them. As you can see, these are all chemical sunscreens and I've written down the chemicals on these post-it notes here. So, <clears throat> but I'll talk more about them. Okay, so when we look at the sunscreens, we see that they're filled with really, really dangerous chemicals. And chemicals that are really bad for your kids which is super disappointing and the worst thing about it is that they're marketed for babies and you're made to think that this is the safest thing for you and for your kids and the spray is the easiest thing to use but it's the absolute worst for you. So we have three spray sunscreens which were found at the house so we have this is so amazing so a copper tone sport a banana boat sport and a Neutrogena beach defense SPF 70 this is SPF 50 SPF 30 stays on strong when you sweat won't run won't sting um, water and sun protection and then with Neutrogena's patented Helioplex, which again, all that Helioplex is, my friends, is avobenzone plus oxybenzone. Oxybenzone is the number one sunscreen ingredient that you want to stay away from. And especially for your kids, because it is bioaccumulated and biomagnified. It's found in 97% of Americans nearly every single organism in all of our waterways because it can't be filtered out by wastewater treatment plants. And again, bioaccumulated, biomagnified, it transfers, um, it contaminates breast milk and then transfers to the baby, such as in dolphins, and it completely bleaches coral. It's the most freaky, weird endocrine disruptor, skeletal endocrine disruptor that many scientists have ever seen and it has been proven to cause infertility low birth weights in humans and so many things so stay away from oxybenzone please my friends and most of these things have oxybenzone and the maximum amount of oxybenzone that sunscreens are allowed to have is six percent which was recently changed it was ten percent up until like 2010 in most countries and then um, Europe changed it I think in 2011 to six percent um, we changed it in like 2015 2015 I think to six percent um, and the FDA is notoriously slow to move on anything so that's a topic for another time but um, Oxybenzone is horrendous and most of these things have the maximum amount of oxybenzone that you can put um, into a sunscreen. And so when you spray these sunscreens, then you're getting oxybenzone not only on yourself, which first of all, it's absorbed in your skin. It's the most rapidly absorbed sunscreen chemical and it is the most frequent to cause allergies. So it causes allergies in like over 25% of people um, will get like sunburn like reactions when they put this on their skin and it interacts with the sun so that doesn't make any sense that a sunscreen when you're putting it on your skin to protect from the sun that once you hit the sun then it causes a sunburn like reaction and it's in most sunscreens oxybenzone is found in 68 percent of sunscreens it's wild and so we're all spraying this on ourselves and so it's getting in our bodies where then it's excreted flushed into the waterways again because it's flushed through the toilet it can't be uh, filtered out by wastewater treatment plants flushed back into our waterways or it gets all over the beaches of course 
when you spray it on, let's say, golf courses, everything, all the grass dies. Why is that? Spray sunscreens, my friends, oxybenzone. And so millions upon millions of people are putting this into our waterways and around 16 tons of sunscreen enters the waterways just around our reefs each year, just around our reefs. And most of it is, has oxybenzone and a lot of it has the maximum amount, which is 6%. And so there are tons of oxybenzone that are contaminating our reefs and they continue, it continues to stay there because we keep polluting it. So it's called a pseudo persistent organopollutant because of how common it is. It's found everywhere from the Arctic to, to everywhere around the equator. It's killing the reefs absolutely everywhere. And the super sad thing is that people don't know about it. So people continue to buy these sunscreens and put these sunscreens on thinking that they're safe and they're really, really not. And they're really toxic. And it's not only harming you, but all of the marine environment around you, which is everywhere. So, and it also is what supports our entire uh, ecosystem of life. So let's just talk about the coral reefs for a second. Um, the coral reefs protect our shorelines. So here in Florida, we know that. 99% um, of the Florida Keys uh, reefs are completely dead because of oxybenzone. Because oxybenzone, oxybenzone not only kills the corals, but it kills them at far or bleaches them at far lower temperatures. It causes viruses and virus-like infections and a bunch of other things depending on light and heat and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but it bleaches them at far lower temperatures, up to 10 degrees lower than normal bleaching temperatures. So even if corals were normally not to bleach with oxybenzone at, at far lower temperatures, they're still gonna bleach. But even worse, corals can recover after bleaching events because corals are powered by zooxanthellae, which are symbiotic algae, which live in their tissues. And the zooxanthellae are expelled when oxybenzone, they're literally being drowned in oxybenzone. So that's what's happening to the corals right now. And that's why they're bleaching. Um, but worse, they can't recover. So once they're bleached, they're bleached forever. And normally the zooxanthellae can return under normal conditions. So like if temperatures get lowered, you know, and those are the only factors that are contributing to the bleaching. But the problem is that we're looking at all of these other factors that are contributing to bleaching, but not looking at the largest factor that's impacting bleaching the most, which is the tons of oxybenzone and octanoxate, but mainly oxybenzone that is entering our waterways and we are doing this and we're doing this to ourselves as well and this is because we're thinking that it's safe and that it's the best thing and it's not and it's so preventable and so sprays you can smell aerosol sprays from like a hundred feet away Craig Downs has a bunch of studies about this um, he owns Hereticus Labs in Virginia and he is like the god of oxybenzone and octanoxate and corals and everything. So thank you, Craig Downs, for all of your research and your studies, which have very, very, very much helped to educate me. Um, but anyway, so you're putting these on and it's polluting everything. And let's look into the baby These are probably the two most popular sunscreens and that like if I were a consumer who weren't who didn't diligently um, research everything having to do with sunscreens and every chemical in sunscreens and everything about sunscreens for the past three years of my life then these are what I would buy and so but these are really bad. So Aveeno Continuous Protection Baby, right? And the ingredients you see here are 
avobenzone, 3%, homosalate, 10%, octosalate, 5%, octocrylene, 2.8%, and oxybenzone, 6%, which is the maximum. And so homosalate and oxybenzone are both uh, really bad endocrine disruptors for estrogen, androgen, progesterone, um, and they have really bad toxic breakdown products, which is another huge thing, is the toxic breakdown products, which are far more toxic than the actual chemicals themselves. And um, with oxybenzone, it only breaks down in fat, and which is in the tissues of organisms. And anyway, so lots of really bad things, but I'll record a super long, super long series about oxybenzone. Um, but avobenzone, that's for UVA, but it's super unstable, so it needs to be stabilized by octocrylene, so 2.8%, um, octosalate, 5%, which also, so a lot of these um, penetrate the skin and a lot of them cause skin allergies and are found in um, breast milk and all these other things. So again, really bad. Um, Ultra sheer dry touch 100 plus like I would think that this would protect me all day super amazing but um, ingredients again are avobenzone 3% homosalate uh, 15% octosalate 5% octocrylene 10% and oxybenzone 6% so 39% of this sunscreen is chemical filters that are entering our environment and what is the purpose for this? Well, they tell you it's to protect your skin, but really you're putting all these chemicals in there because all these chemicals need to be combined to reach a certain spectrum of UV protection because all these chemicals only protect against a tiny range of the UV spectrum. So zinc and titanium dioxide are physical mineral filters and they have broad spectrum coverage. So they protect against most of the UV spectrum. Zinc oxide is the best and protects against basically the, the full spectrum and titanium dioxide following suit. And it's used to make things a little bit more cosmetically elegant as well and not so white and pasty. Um, but those are really all that you need and those have been deemed safe for, you know, over 50 years, 100 years, however long, doesn't matter, but like they're super safe and they are known to be safe. And so this is all based upon both my research and also my mom is a dermatologist. So I have a lot of very good inside info as well as checks on things. <clears throat> so, um, all these chemicals are put in there to stabilize each other and to reach this full spectrum of coverage or a broader spectrum of coverage that zinc and titanium dioxide can do alone, but to make it way cheaper and to make it like ultra sheer, it's better to use chemicals. So <clears throat> for the skincare companies, we have our most popular sunscreens here. down the ingredients 
here, so you'll see. So we have Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Helioplex SPF 100, which I would say is probably the most popular. And so I ordered the ingredients from most to least. And I'll post a picture of this too so that it's all clear. But here you see homosalate 15, octocrylene 10, oxybenzone 6, octosalate 5, avobenzone 3, which adds up to 39%, which is just absolutely wild. Like you do not need 39% of a sunscreen to be chemicals, especially when it's a sunscreen that is a sunscreen that contains a lot of preservatives because that's another big difference in um, sunscreens and qualities is that um, a lot of the um, less expensive, say, sunscreens, um, sure, they will have sunscreen, but a lot of it is preservatives and fillers. So the majority of it is going to contain, is going to be contained of uh, fillers and preservatives. Um, so I'll bring those sprays over um, and we'll take a look at those ingredients. But like Neutrogena Beach Defense, again, so you'll see these two fairly similar. Homo salate, 15%, uh, uh, oxybenzone, 6%. Uh, octosalate 4, octocrylene 4, avobenzone 3. So again, helioplex is just oxybenzone 6% plus avobenzone 3%. That is helioplex and it's toxic. So yeah, these are the two Neutrogenas that I was just talking about. So, I mean, I'd probably buy these. And you usually buy the sprays because like your kids are gonna run away from you when you're getting them but you have to put like three times as much spray on because the majority of the spray gets everywhere big thing with sprays is you need to rub the sprays in um, you can't just spray it and be okay you need to actually rub it in and so most of the spray gets everywhere again with these chemicals they get caught in the sand with the tides they go into the waters and they contaminate the marine environment. Um, same with this, lightweight, clean feel. But again, avobenzone 3%, oxybenzone 6%, helioplex. And then it says, number one dermatologist recommended sun care. Like, I don't understand that. And so it's so funny, the claims that they can make in America. And like in Europe, none of this stuff is, <laughs> is allowed. But in America, they can just like pay to say whatever, basically. Um, but nothing against any companies. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about the chemicals themselves. And these sunscreens happen to be at the house. Um, and I think that they actually do surprisingly give a very good overview of the traditional range of sunscreens that a typical consumer would buy. So, so then we have the copper tones and banana boat and Yes, I have mineral sunscreen on right now. So, copper tone and banana boat are pretty similar here. Here's the ingredient comparison. Both homosalate 5%, octosalate 4%, octocrylene. Um, this one has, so the banana boat has 5%, the copper tone has 2%. Um, avobenzone, they both have 3%. Basically everything has 3% or er, avobenzone and most have like 6% oxybenzone. Banana Boat just took the oxybenzone out of their um, 
spray, which, or it's out of this spray, which is super cool. Um, and then this one, the copper tone still has oxybenzone 4%. Um, but yeah, stay away from sprays. Sprays are really, really, really bad. And uh, this, the um, amount of sunscreens containing um, oxybenzone, there's an EWG report that in like 2011 it was like 10, and now it's like 270 or something. And so like these levels are increasing and the really big alarm is that it's polluting our marine environment with all these increasing levels and it's pseudo-persistent organopollutant. It's everywhere and it's constantly being refreshed and renewed, especially in places like Hawaii, which is why they banned it. And back to Key West, uh, they just banned oxybenzone and octanoxate as well, so go Key West, as well as Palau who banned those as well as eight other chemicals, eight other sunscreen chemicals. Um, but stay away from sprays and go for only mineral sunscreens if you want to be absolutely safe. And then it's your choice as to which mineral sunscreen you want. Uh, make sure that it's like not just, oh, with zinc formula, because like they could just add a little zinc. Like make sure that it doesn't have, look at the back in America. Um, all of the active ingredients will be on the top, on the back, so you can see them very, very clearly. In Europe, it's much more difficult, but I'll bring these closer. All right. So here we have So this Avino baby, we can take a closer look at this because this is really scary for me. So this Avino baby, it says pediatrician recommended, yet the ingredients, so it has the maximum amount of oxybenzone, which is 6%. So pregnant women should not use oxybenzone because it's absorbed and it's been known to cause fetal development diseases. So that's just a fact. And we can go more into that later, but that's all that you should need to know. Um, plus again, the high rates of allergies. So oxybenzone was largely the reasons that benzophenines, benzophenones, whatever, were named as the contact allergen of the year in 2014. Um, because it causes such wide rates of allergies. And in 2006, Helena Gonzalez actually came out with a report that said that oxybenzone was unsuitable for, ch for children and she showed um, studies with, with mothers and children's and penetration and um, the, uh, the toxicity of oxybenzone and proved that it was unsuitable for children. In 2006, this was 13 years ago, over a decade ago, but 13 years ago. And nobody knows about this chemical. Like the only reason that I know about it is because I started studying it and researching it and then I was just so flabbergasted by everything about it that I just went absolutely nuts. So like my house is an entire CSI crime scene with papers uh, taped to the wall and literally everywhere around my house like my boyfriend <laughs> like bless his soul I feel so bad for him but I mean this stuff it's all connected and it's all crazy and shocking and Craig Downs was like the first one or the main one to really connect the dots and bless him like I love you Craig Downs um, but so I'm just trying to continue to spread the message because this is wild and it takes so much research and hard work and commitment to actually understand this stuff and put it together. Like I have, I devoted the past like four months to solely working on oxybenzone and making these connections and then transforming my house into like an FBI CSI crime scene, like massive craziness. Um, 
but so I was really surprised when I came down to my Florida house and I looked at these sunscreens and I was just like, there we go. It's perfect because this is literally what people buy and and everybody would, would think that it's safe, but it's really, 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 really not. So going back to it, if you know baby, so 10% homo salate, which again is an endocrine disruptor for estrogen, uh, androgen, and progesterone. It has really toxic byproducts and it uh, penetrates the skin and is found in mother's milk. So that's great. You know, all right, plus oxybenzone, which is even more toxic, so 6% maximum and like really bad for kids, proven super bad for kids, and it's in like all of these. And this is in what you put on your baby. Like this is what they tell you, pediatrician recommended to put on your baby. And it causes feminization because it mimics the hormone estrogen. And so in fish, it shows all these crazy, crazy behavioral effects and causes a skewed birth ratio. So four times as many females as males and gender confusion, all these crazy things. And this is what you're putting on your kid who is so much more sensitive to it. And they don't have the metabolism to break it down. So it's so much worse for them and it's going to affect them so much more because their body can't handle the levels of things that our bodies can handle, that adults can handle. And then octosalate, 5%, avobenzone, 3%, octocrylene, 2.8%. Super great. Lots of these show high rates of allergies. And, you know, the main point is that all of these are so unnecessary because literally all that you need, especially to protect your child or your baby, is zinc oxide and you wanna throw some titanium dioxide in there to make it more cosmetically elegant, change the uh, proportions of the zinc oxide and, and titanium dioxide to make it more effective um, depending on how you want it to appear on the skin. Um, put different ingredients in there, you know, th uh, depending on, on what quality and what level of protection you want. But zinc oxide and titanium dioxide will always give you all that you need and you never ever 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 need any of these chemicals yet this is this is what we're buying and this is what we're being sold on and it's 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 really really harmful for our human health and for global health and for the health of our marine ecosystem underwater which we on on land can't see but it powers everything it powers everything and coral reefs are home to 25, coral reefs are home to a quarter of all marine life. And that's where all the babies and everything find shelter so that they're able to actually grow up and develop. And so when we lose our coral reefs, we literally lose everything because they're the foundation of everything. And they're the most magnificent, most marvelous, magical, mystical creatures on earth and most, most productive and biologically diverse ecosystem on the planet. And they're underwater, yet you can see them from space. And they power everything. So you can learn more about it on savethecorals.club. C-L-U-B, because it's a club, not just a thing. Because we're all working together to protect our planet. And the greatest threat to our coral reefs is chemical sunscreens and especially oxybenzone containing sunscreens, which very sadly is most sunscreens. And so looking at these sunscreens down here, okay, so taking a look at these sunscreens, I mean, all of them have oxybenzone except for uh, whatever it was, this banana boat that just took it out. Yeah, this banana boat just took it out. Um, and then uh, this this uh, ocean potion just took it out. Oxybenzone free, this is recent because of the regulations and, and because Hawaii was blasting them for being 
the largest oxybenzone polluter <laughs> um, like on the planet. Um, but um, even the sun fusion extreme for like totally tan, waterproof, whatever, SPF 8, it still has 1% oxybenzone. And then, it, it, like, all these say, like, dermatologist tested, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, what does that mean? Tested, tested for what? Tested that it was what? Like, you know, dermatologist tested, dermatologist recommended that it was safe for babies. Pediatrician recommended that it was safe for babies. Like, what, pe what pediatrician, like, an uninformed one who doesn't know about oxybenzone? And the sad thing is that most of these doctors and pediatricians and dermatologists are, are, in denial about this entire oxybenzone um, fiasco disaster that has been becoming revealed because they've been recommending sunscreens to their patients, which yes, that is still a thing. And, but they've, but they haven't really said anything about oxybenzone. So they've like been recommending sunscreens with oxybenzone to their patients, not knowing about its harmful effects and then now like their toxic effect or its toxic effects have been revealed for you know since like 2001 with schlump and for there have been study after study after study for decades about how toxic oxybenzone is um but people don't want to believe it because it's in most sunscreens and sunscreen companies are making too much money by having it in there because it's one of the few UVA, UVA filters that are actually approved in the US, of which avobenzone is the best, but the problem is it's so unstable, so you need to stabilize it with something. Um, but, you know, you get a wide range of sunscreens and most of them are bad, and that's the problem. So, I've been ranting for a pretty long time, so we can end the video here, but, um, I'll record more videos about Mushmuta Tatuta Zakza. But I'll record more videos about um, sunscreens and oxybenzone and everything. Um, but for now, that's that. Um, choose mineral sunscreens, uh, only zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Stay away from Helioplex because Helioplex guarantees that it has oxybenzone. So anything with Helioplex has oxybenzone. So no Helioplex, people. No spray sunscreens and no octanoxate and go for all mineral, man. So stay safe in the sun, have fun, and love the world around us and our oceans and keep us and yourself safe. As I was putting these other sunscreens away here that I found at the house earlier, I found two more! Woohoo! So, yes, I know more oxybenzone, my friend. So this Neutrogena Wet Skin Kids Beach and Pool sunscreen spray 70 plus again with helioplex and what does that mean oxybenzone and avobenzone so again this has six percent oxybenzone and three percent avobenzone like all helioplex things and also 15 percent homosalate five percent octosalate and ten percent octocrylene like this is a wild amount of chemicals to be spraying on your kids, especially when you have to spray like three times as much of this stuff on them to like fully cover them. You still have to rub it in for it to work. And then it's gonna wash off and contaminate everything. But then you also have to reapply on them. So you're using like so, so, so much of this on your kids and these are endocrine disruptors and they're really toxic for kids. And it says Neutrogena wet skin kids. Ooh. All right, gecko. So then I also found this um, Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry 
touch sunblock so I think this is an OG of this which is pretty cool because um, yeah so here so it says new with helioplex right oh it was leaking out of that see that's what happens it's all like yellow and orange and yucky but it's also eight years old. So new <laughs> with Helioplex, broad spectrum, UVA, UVB. So that comes from the avobenzone, oxybenzone, which still here is oxybenzone, 6%, avobenzone, 3%. And then they still had a high homosalate of 10%, octosalate, 5%, and octocrylene, 2.8%. So that's the same thing as in here, basically. I mean, this one, well, this one's 100 plus, so they increased, they bumped the homosalate up to 15 and the octocrylene up to 10 from the 2.8 and the octus yeah it's the same all right and then um but here you can see that the active ingredients are listed before the fda did their new monograph so that's how they used to do it which is very interesting. And then here, which is cool, it shows the actual sticker. So like it legitimately is new. And this expired in 2007, a decade old sunscreen. And then people keep these and then they think that sunscreens are still like that, that, that they still work and they really don't. So chemical sunscreens will degrade much faster, especially in sunlight and chemicals are all different in like their stability and especially in sunlight and reactivity and everything like that so you would need to look into that more which i'll have all the resources um but but that's also something to watch out for is that sunscreen does expire usually it's two years maybe three especially if it's a mineral sunscreen but chemical sunscreens will expire within like a year usually, and especially if they're left out in the sun, which often happens, then they might be unstable and the active ingredients won't be active anymore, or inactive rather. Um, so these are the two new ones I found in addition to the Aveeno Baby, which has, again, the max oxybenzone 6%, avobenzone 3%, so they're using like the Helioplex basically. Beach Defense Helioplex, Kids Wet Skin Kids Helioplex, all these, Neutrogena has their Helioplex, and all Helioplex is oxybenzone and avobenzone. So another something to watch out for, and I'll see you soon with more.